Today I'm going to show you how to create a rag pipeline so that it can automatically update its vectors when the source materials change. So imagine if your customers have files that can be updated at any point and you on the other hand can have your vectors updated automatically so that your queries from the users will always be finding the right files. Um, it can either be updated um, automatically based on a change event or it could be updated on the schedule. So the example that I have today is um, GitLab's uh, company handbook. So GitLab uh, as a company does a lot of res uh, open source and their company handbook is just out there for, for grabs. So I'm just gonna crawl through this uh, massive website. Uh, before we jumped in, so we have three things that we gotta set up, but I'm not gonna show all of them. Um, one is Vectorize. So Vectorize is the uh, rack pipeline that we're gonna be using. Uh, second is Firecrawl. So Firecrawl is a um, open source uh, web crawling uh, service. Uh, it's one of the best out there. And last but not least, we have um, Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is just a place for us to store our embeddings. Um, so how it works is we first go to GitLab and then GitLab company handbook. And then we're just gonna use Firecrawl to crawl through all the links here, basically stealing all the data. No, I mean, what I really mean is capturing all the data. And then once we have the text information, then we can convert that to embeddings and then store that in Elasticsearch in an index. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and set up my uh, rag pipeline. So this is what Vectorize looks like. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna click on uh, build a rag pipeline. Um, and I'm gonna go in here and then I'm gonna give it a name. So I'll say GitLab Handbook 3, because I've been doing this three times in a row. Um, and then I'm gonna choose a, a vector database. So this could be anything from, you know, Pinecone to um, Milvis from Zillas, or even Postgres, you can have like PG vector or Quadrant. Um, but we're gonna be going with Elasticsearch because uh, we like Elasticsearch around here. Um, so I'm just gonna click on this and then I'm gonna say, um, so it's pretty intelligent so that, you know, now that I have, I have my connection, uh, I can say like, you know, let's create an index called GitLab Handbook uh, 3. And if the uh, index doesn't exist, it'll create one. If not, it'll just tap into the existing index. And then for what it says here, uh, select AI platform. That just means like, you know, which em embeddings model provider do I want? So I'm just gonna go with OpenAI and then I'm, I'm gonna choose the uh, large and more expensive option. I'm just gonna keep all of this stuff uh, as a default, but there are some really cool extraction strategy uh, here that we can try at a later date. For example, Iris, which uses uh, vision models to do some cool stuff. But I'm just gonna use the fast and simple extractor. And next we're gonna go to the uh, source connectors. So source connectors just means like, how are we gonna get to the source. So the source here is a website, right? And because it's a website, we have to point our source connector to a um, web crawler. So uh, there are two ways to do web crawlers on this platform. One is through the web crawler. This is built by the team. And the other one is through Firecrawl, which is you know pretty good. It's like, honestly, one of the best out there. I'm gonna go with Firecrawl. And then, as you can see, you can also add another connector if you want, but we're not gonna do that. I'm not gonna try and complicate this stuff. And then, um, we're just gonna paste in our URL here. So, in Firecrawl's documentation, you can go in, you can take a look at how they do scrape versus crawl. So scrape means you just hit one, web, what, one URL and then you get the content out. Uh, crawl means you're gonna go to that URL and then you're gonna go through all the URLs in the sitemap or inside of that URL that you can find. So you can expect, you know, more than one, maybe 10, 20. Um, 
So we're gonna do crawl and then we're gonna drop in the uh, URL for this. Uh, and then go back here, paste it in here. And then we're just gonna go with 500 here. So I'm gonna burn some credits for sure. And keep in mind, I've been doing this for a couple of times already. So I'm really feeling it this time. And here we're gonna set it to 30. So it's gonna try to see like if there are 30 links inside of the link that I'm looking that's looking at, then it's gonna try to go inside those links as well. Next, we're gonna go to this is the, the most important part of this video, which is schedule a rag pipeline. We want it to be weekly. So there are two ways that we can detect changes uh, or update our pipeline automatically. We can do real time uh, or we can do scheduled because this is a website. There's no way for us to know when the website is updated. So we're gonna go with the more like brute force way, which is like every week on Monday and maybe Wednesday, Monday. Um, we're just gonna run the pipeline. Um, yeah. That's it, That's, this, is, this is all you're looking at, how to set up a scheduled rack pipeline. And uh, I'm gonna hit this button and then we're gonna get back in a couple of minutes. So what I'm gonna show you is a pipeline that I have already created uh, a couple of days ago because this does take a while to crawl through 500 websites. Yeah. And as you can see, um, we have a total of 4,816 vectors and 501 documents. So remember that we set the uh, crawl to uh, 500 websites? Yeah, that's what we get, 500. And if you wanna double check, you can go in here in the documents tab and you can see that, okay, um, we're gonna have, we're gonna see like some of our um, websites being uh, shown in here. And we all can also see like, for example, like. This is the like the alert playbook management uh, page from GitLab handbook. And it, it was embedded, vectorized, written to the uh, you know, vector database, which is Elasticsearch. Source is from Firecrawl and it's in sync, which means it's up to date. So everything is in sync. Um, cool, so I guess we can just go in and test it. Um, Let's see. So before we test, I, I just need to know that, you know, I don't think 500 was the entire handbook. So I need to go and ask questions that this thing can actually answer. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, I wanna ask about AWS systems. So I'm just going here. Oh, this is a placeholder page. It's not here. These are not the droids you're looking for. Okay, uh, what about OKRs? OKRs, basics. Let's see how GitLab sets their OKR. Let's learn something new today. You a founder like myself? I'm very curious actually. Okay, so OKRs have four superpowers. Focus, alignment, tracking, and stretch. Now, I don't know what that means. I honestly don't care. It sounds like uh, corporate gibberish. But what I want to do is when I ask our, uh, I want to do test some similar research here to see if our vectors actually work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this pipeline and I'm going to go to rack sandbox. Click on this. this is the nice things about this is that we have an interface to test our embeddings. So it's just, it's just your typical chat interface. Um, you go in, you have a system behavior, and you have a system prompt, and you have a question you can ask. That question gets turned into um, vectors, gets you know compared to the distance between the vectors in our vector database in Elasticsearch, and then brings back some, some context, which has some of the websites there. And what I'm hoping is that it's gonna return the, um, the one that I'm, I'm asking about. So, what I want to ask about is, what are the superpowers of OKR? Uh, okay, let's see. Let me just modify this real quick, just to be just to be nice. Um, let's see. Uh, you are a an expert in company handbook. 
and GitLab. It's just to make it more, I don't know, role play. -y. And the question is, what are the superpowers of OKRs? And here we also have the option to re-rank. So sometimes re-rank makes a huge difference in your um, precision. For similar research, um, the, the idea is to get as, as high of a recall as possible, which means you can just pull in everything that is remotely relevant to the question. But after recall, you want precision. So you want, because large language models have limited context, uh, the retrieval part, this is the retrieval part, and then once you get to the generation part, if you just stuff the context of the model, uh, in our case, actually in here, we have a Llama 3.170B, but we can also choose something you know, bigger or better or newer. Um, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna go crazy and choose the three bill or one billion parameters one, but I do wanna set the temperature lower. Anyways, so if we stuff the context with uh, just irrelevant chunks of text, then it's gonna hallucinate, get, get confused. That's why we want to re-rank responses sometimes. Although re-ranking is makes our queries a little bit more expensive. If you're using something like Cohere re-ranking, um, I was trying Gina AI re-ranking at some point. And I think it's more cost-effective, um, but this is Cohere re-ranking, uh, and it's it's part of the platform. Like you don't have to pay extra for it. So let's say I want re-ranking, and I'm just gonna hit submit, and then I'm gonna just watch this column right here to see if the relevant chunks come back. Okay, so we got one here, average relevancy 0.4, uh, relevancy very relevant, okay. Um, let's see. Um, the superpowers of OKRs are focus, alignment, tracking, and stretch. Yeah, that sounds about right. And the cool thing is they also have the citation here, so you can go and check it out. We actually got a like, different page. I don't know what this even is. This is like the uh, directory page or something. That's actually cool. So we essentially found the same information, but somewhere else. Uh, let's check out chunk two. Yeah, so chunk two is the exact chunk, uh, this exact page that we were looking at to come up with the question. Um, let's try another one. Let's go back to the documents tab. This document tab this is very useful because we know which of our sources have been not only like crawl, but also like in sync. And being in sync is very important because we want you know, our users to be asking questions about the latest files that they are familiar with, not the files that we know. Okay, let's see. Uh, what about this page right here? Um, which companies can be listed here? Any company that's inspired by GitLab's culture? What, what are KPIs? More than 3,000 people contribute to GitLab. GitLab incorporated team consists of... Uh... Okay, this is, this is a good one. The GitLab incorporated team consists of the following 2,358 2, team members and there's 363 pets. We believe we're the world's largest all remote organizations. Okay, so I'm gonna ask um, how many countries and how many pets? I think that's a good one. Um, okay, so let, me just, let me just test that real quick. Uh, how many pets are there in our company? G. Um, okay. 363 pets in the company. Okay. Same page, was able to find the right chunk, which is great. Um, that's great. Uh, it seems like it's working. Let me ask one more time. I just want to find something else here to, to ask. Remote, all remote versus uh, hybrid. So if your company requires you to go back to the office, if you don't want to, you can always apply to GitLab. They are 100% remote. But what I wanna ask here is, by the end of the, oh, okay. 
Uh, okay, for this final project in this course, you create a real hypothetical, a hypothetical strategic planning transition team. Da, 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 da. Intermediate level course intended for learners. Da, 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 da. Okay, so what I want to ask is, um, what level of difficulty is the GitLab? Uh, is the um, remote work course. Now this could bring up other uh, sources, which I'm really curious to see how it's gonna handle this one. Um, intermediate level course intended for learners. Okay, cool, so that's exactly what we were looking at, which is great. So we just tested a couple of queries and um, the precision rate is pretty high. And it's really nice to be able to like test it in this platform too. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Like that's how you uh, set up a rag pipeline that can be updated on a schedule. Uh, it's literally a couple of clicks and not much more to it. And if you wanna implement this into your application, you can also treat vectorize as like an all-in-one endpoint for everything rag related. So you send in a query, you can set like, you know, the number of uh, your top K, and then you can also like just put like re-ranking, like all in the one in the same query as well. You don't have to set up like separate services to do different things. So me like in another video, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about how you can use um, this URL right here, and that treat that basically as your all in one rack system. So that's it. Um, that's how you set up a scheduled rack. Uh, pipeline. See you in the next one.